Welcome to the Excel course guide for beginners. Now, for the first discussion, we're going to be talking about who is this course best suited to. Now, naturally, this course is for beginners, so people who haven't used Excel before or have recently started using Excel um, and want to learn a little bit more. Alternatively, you may have been using Excel for a little while, but you've never had any formal training and you just want to clean up your basics before you move on to the intermediary and advanced courses. Now, don't feel like this is too dumbed down because you really want to start from the basics. However, as we move to the chapter, it does get a little bit more complicated um, and we get through some of the more sophisticated features. But there won't be anything too tricky or complex that anyone who's just starting out with Excel won't understand. If you feel like this is too basic, you can move on to our intermediary and advanced courses. The first thing we're going to be talking about is the very basics. So just around creating a new workbook. And again, if this feels too dumbed down for you, please just move on to the next chapter. But we really want to start from the foundation so we don't miss anything. So the first thing we want to talk about is creating a new workbook and just understanding what Excel does. First thing we want to do is go to our desktop and open Microsoft Excel. You can also find this in your start menu over here. So just double click and open up Microsoft Excel. This is the first view that you're most likely going to see. It's a blank uh, workbook. Alternatively, you might have a different window. You might be seeing this. All I've done is just go into the file menu and this just shows you uh, either to open a new work blank workbook open an existing template or open a recently opened file. You can also open an existing file that you can locate through the open tool. But what we're going to do for this is just open a blank workbook. As you can see, we're going back to the original view and this has many different cells going to the right and many different cells going down. So these are called rows and these are called columns. And there are numerous different things we can do in Excel. It's very useful for doing accounting, for calculations, for modeling. There's all kinds of things you can do and you really understand the capability once we go through some of these functions. In the home ribbon up here, this is how we nav navigate. You can change in between each of these different menus and it unlocks different features as well. You can also access these through the keyboard if you're more of an advanced user. But for now, we recommend just starting off with your mouse. So just in this section here, we've got Format Painter, which allows you to format a different cell. I'm not going to go into any of these into too much detail because we'll touch on these later on the course. We've also got different font sizes, so you can format text. So we can make this bold, italicized, underline, change the size of the font. We can fill a color and choose a color, change the font size. We can put different lines around it like that. We'll put all borders around it. We can also change the alignment in here depending it moves the text around in there. We can merge a few cells. We just select that with the mouse and press merge and center. We can also wrap text. So if we have a long sentence over here like this, what we can do is we don't want it to extend out across two lines. Just wrap it like that. So you can all be read into one box. Over here, we've got different types of general number currency, etc. So you tell Excel what they are. You can change it to a currency quickly, a percentage, or, or a comma. These are all options in here. These are just quick buttons. And for a number, you can increase the decimal places. Right now, it's only showing uh, three decimal places. We can reduce that by pressing this right button here. We can increase it by pressing that button there. We've got conditional formatting over here, which we'll talk about later. That's basically putting colors on certain rules to make it easier to read. And we've got cell styles over here. So it's some pre-formatted different styles you can use, which is very often used in Excel modeling. And it's good to have in your work papers to make sure all your cells are very neatly color coded to a certain type. For example, an input cell or an output cell. And we'll talk about that a little bit later in more advanced courses. And over here, we've got an interesting thing, find and select, where you can go find, replace, go to, go to special, and we'll talk about that later 
why we might use those. So that's the Home tab, that's the most commonly used tab. In the Insert, we've also got different things in here. We've got Pivot Tables, which we'll talk about in the Intermediary and Advanced courses. We've got Pictures, where you can insert a picture. You can insert a shape as well, which we probably won't use too often. You can insert an icon like a cross. Again, you probably won't use that too often. Probably more of a PowerPoint thing. We've also got Smart Art, which is more of a PowerPoint thing. And we've got Charts over here, which we'll talk about in detail in the intermediary courses. Um, but these are very handy if you want to chart out certain data and see what it looks like visually. It makes it easier to understand. We've also got pivot charts, which we'll talk about in the advanced course. We've got spark lines, which we'll talk about in the intermediary course. Slices and timelines, which are related to pivot charts, which we'll talk about in the advanced course. You can insert hyperlinks here if you want. You can insert a text box if you want, or word art. And you can also insert symbols and equations. Again, we don't use this too often unless we're using charts. Now, let's talk about page layout. So this is where you can organize the formatting of a certain page. You can change your um, themes. You can do your custom themes as well and set up custom colors if you want to have your text and borders and things in a certain color scheme. You can set your margins and things. For, this is important when you're getting ready to print the document, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. You can set up what the page actually looks like um, in terms of how close it is to the edge of the page when it prints, whether it's going to be portrait or landscape when you print, what the print area is. We'll talk about all this a little bit later. Um, formulas. So this actually lists out all the formulas that you can use or some of the better formulas you can use. I generally don't use this because after you've gone through this course, you'll learn what all the key formulas you need to know are. Um, so I don't actually use this at all, but they're all listed there if you do need it. We'll talk about the name manager, which is a more advanced thing. That's basically, you can tell it where there's a range of cells and say we're going to call this X, Y, Z. And later, when we want to reuse that in a formula or refer to it, we can just call it X, Y, Z instead of going sum of these cells over here. We can actually manage those names over there. We'll talk about that a little bit later. We can actually check our formulas over here. So we've got two things called trace precedent and trace dependent. So trace precedent is basically, if you've got a formula linking into this cell, what you'll press this button and you'll see everything that's relying on that. So if I've got a big Excel file and I want to delete a number in here, what I'll do is I'll check trace precedence to make sure nothing else in the workbook is relying on that first. This is the opposite of that. This is checking where this is relying on a number from somewhere else. And therefore, I can trace where that number is actually being calculated from in a different tab or a different workbook. Error checking. So this is one, occasionally when you open an Excel file, you might get an error popping up and it says, you've got a circular reference or you've got an error. Usually it's because of a circular reference. This is actually where it tells you where that error is. It might say, you've got an error in cell M. 14 and I'll know to go to M14 and actually find that there's a circular reference in that. If you're not sure what that means, we'll talk about it a little bit later in detail, but it's basically um, when a cell is relying on itself in a formula, so it doesn't make sense. But we'll talk about that later if that doesn't make sense. Over here we've got calculation options. So by default it'll stay on automatic. And what that means is if you've got a workbook with lots of different calculations in every single tab, um, calculating lots of different formulas, it can slow down your workbook because every time you make a change, the whole workbook recalculates. So what you can do is change this to manual, and that means your workbook will be a lot faster, but it means that you need to remember to refresh it uh, because if you change some of the inputs or some of the calculations, it's not going to show the correct value. It's waiting until you tell it to calculate it and press calculate now. But again, that only is relevant if you have a very big workbook that's quite slow. If you're just doing basic calculations, you do not need this. In the data, this is this is where it gets a little bit complicated. If you're an advanced Excel user, you can link data from multiple different sources. For example, from a database or from an accounting software and things like that. We probably won't be talking about this at all. It's more for sophisticated users and people who use databases. 
there's some interesting things in here it's more of a quirk than anything it's about stocks and geography so if you have a stock portfolio what you can do is actually you can use this and you click on that and type in your share prices or sorry your shares that you actually own and it'll look up the data um, for those particular uh, stocks for example the current share price the capitalization all those kind of financial things and the same for geography as well you can use certain country names and look up population uh, whether it's democracy the president all those kind of things more of a quirk I don't think anyone really uses it in a professional environment and okay now we're moving on to filters so filters are something that's really important um, if you have a lot of data in a list, for example, you might have a database of your customers with names, customer addresses, emails, etc. What you can do is filter it and then you can actually sort it. So you can put it in alphabetical order, you can only pull out people who start with a P, or you can pull out people with the same email address and so forth. So it's a really good way of looking through data. Um, over here is some data tools. So what you can do over here is you can remove duplicates. You can remove data validation. Um, so basically what remove duplicates is, is if you have a, a customer data base and you're trying to figure out, have we accidentally added two customers in here and we want to remove both of them, we can press that and we'll remove the duplicates from that list. Um, and data validation, so this is a good way to do drop down boxes and things like that. So we'll talk about that a little bit later in the intermediary courses. We've also got some sophisticated things over here. So what if analysis, we'll talk about that in the mentory, intermediary course. That basically is when you have a complicated math problem and you know the formula, for example, we know the output is 800 and the formula is A plus B times C times D. And we know what all the inputs are except for one. Instead of, because we have to work backwards, we can actually use this what if analysis and figure out what that missing input is. So it's a little bit sophisticated. Now grouping, so grouping is kind of like hiding the cells. So hiding the cells, you can do by selecting it like this, right click and press hide. Now what it doesn't do is, it's very easy to miss this because you're going Q, R, S, T, and all of, going, all of a sudden it's going to column A, A. After Z it goes to A, A. What grouping does is the same thing, except it has this little gray bar up here so it's the same outcome, except if you want to expand it, you can press that button. And it's a lot its a lot harder to miss this because you've got this great big plus sign. You can do it over this way as well. You can either hide this or group it. Okay, and then you can also ungroup it. Well, so you can reverse that. Let me just select everything and ungroup that. Okay, and then ungroup this as well. Okay. Okay, moving on to the review tab. So in the review tab, we can do things like check our spelling. So we can check our spelling in the whole workbook. That's obviously not a word. So same as how it operates in Microsoft Word. It'll tell us everything that's wrong in terms of grammar. We can ignore it or add to dictionary. Um, we can also add comments in here. So if, for example, if we've got a formula over here, I'll say uh, we need to fix this and just press enter and the next person who comes through can see all the comments like that and they can also filter through all the comments like this and it'll take them through all the relevant tabs in the workbook so if we've got another comment in here saying this they can go next comment next comment go to the next tab next comment and they can see all their comments here Okay, um, we've also got protection, so we'll talk about that a little bit later in the intermediary course. Uh, and this is basically when you've got some confidential data, you can add this password protect, and it can prevent people from either changing it, seeing certain things, or you can put password. You can there's a lot of controls in here to, to tell people what they can and can't do in password protected. Now, just going through the view tab, we've got the normal view, which is what you can see here. We've also got the page break view. And this is basically what you can see when you're printing. So you can change this and move around what you can print. And this line here is just basically the edge of the page of what you can actually print. So we don't want to go over that. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Now there's some quite advanced stuff in here. We've got macros. That's basically automating things in Excel. We talk about that in the advanced course. Now what you've got up here is you might actually have some extra add-ins. So 
what you can do with Excel is you can download these extra custom toolbars and you might not actually have this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, or this one. And they can actually add extra functionality and capability to your Excel. You don't need them, they're just extra add-ons that might help you and be more efficient. For example, what I've got here is this toolbar that can help me color code things quickly. It can also help me add into an if error function, which we'll talk about later. It can also unhide all the hidden sheets that are in here or format a certain cell as a format or add in a title sheet like this super quickly. So there's lots of different aftermarket products uh, which you can use. These are just what I've chosen to use. So that's pretty much the how we move around Excel. In terms of what's actually on the screen, we've got these little individual squares which we we'll call cells and this is where we can insert data, we can insert numbers and we can insert formulas. So let's go back to the initial guide and make sure we're staying on track with the module. So we've talked about Excel workbooks. I've given you a thorough walkthrough of how it works. And I've given you an understanding of how you open a new blank workbook and get to work with it. So the first few things we're going to be talking about are these three things, which is text, numbers, and dates. In Excel, you can insert data like this, like this, as a date. There are other ways like currency and time, but these are really the three main ways. So it's text, numbers, and dates. Now, what you'll notice up here in this little box is that you can actually tell Excel what the data is. And the reason this is important is because Excel, if it doesn't realize that something is a date or a number or a text, when you insert it into a formula, it's not gonna work. For example, how does Excel know when you add plus one to the 31st, oh, that should probably be the first. How does Excel know that when you add, and notice how this has just changed to a date because Excel has now recognized that yes, that's probably a date. So let's just go back to that because that's not a real date. So Excel doesn't know that it's a date. So what happens if you just add plus one to this? It doesn't work, right? But if we change it to the first, because Excel knows it's a date, we can actually add plus one and it'll bring it up to the first. Now it doesn't bring it to the 32nd because Excel knows dates work in a different way to numbers. What happens if we add plus one to this number over here? Well, we're gonna get a higher number. And what about if we add plus one to this text? Nothing, because you can't add numbers to text. Now Excel doesn't always recognize that something is what it should be. By default, it's most likely gonna go into this general category. And we can actually override that and tell Excel that this is a number. And what that'll do is it'll default, it'll change the formatting, and it'll also change, possibly, how Excel reads it as a formula. For example, the date, if we tell it's gonna be a date, it's not gonna add it to the 32nd, it's actually gonna bring it to the next month and treat it as a date. Um, so this is why it's important to understand the differences and how to override that in Excel and what that impact is on the on the, the number. So another good example is fractions. So for example, if I put one in here, as a number, it's gonna be 1.0, but as a fraction, it's gonna be 100%. So again, depending on how this is formatted, it's gonna have an impact. And you can always shorthand this, press this, change it to a number, you can increase the decimal point or change it to a currency as well. So these are all shorthands to choose from this list over here. Something to watch out for is if you're working with things like output from certain software, like payroll, etc., and you download it as a PDF and change it to an Excel or something like that, you might it might look like a date to you on paper, but Excel might not know it's a date, or it might not know it's a number, etc. It might be reading it as text, etc. So you might actually have to change this up here, or even retype the number. So that Excel goes, yep, okay, I understand that's a number. Now you can do additions with it or other formulas with it. Instead of a value, you're now getting a number. Talk about this, closing a workbook safely. It might sound quite important so that you don't lose hours of work. So let's say I've been working on my Excel book for two hours uh, and I don't want to lose all my work when I close out of it.
So the first thing I want to talk to you about is autosave. So autosave is a feature in Excel which every X minutes or so it will save the file to somewhere on your computer. So if your computer does crash, restart, run out of power, etc., when you open it up again, you'll actually have the most latest version of that file. It might be five, ten minutes old and you might have lost some time of work, but that's okay because you still have it as opposed to losing everything. So one thing I recommend is actually going into File, Options, Save. And in here it's got the settings of how autosave works. So what we can do in here is actually, first of all, reduce the number of minutes that autosave happens. So we can do it every two minutes or, or three minutes. I think between two and three minutes is probably a good idea. And the next thing is to set your default auto recover location. So we know that those files are actually saved to a server that we know where it is. So we have to actually put that location in, in here. Otherwise, it's going to default to a random place on your computer. Now, that's autosave. I wouldn't rely on autosave only. Definitely do not rely on it only. Before we close any workbook, the thing that we have to do is we have to go File, Save As. Now, you only need to do this the first time because after you've saved As, Excel will know where it's located on the server. Because right now I've just got this new book called Book 4. It hasn't been saved anywhere yet. Let's let's see what happens when I try and... Let's see what happens when I try and close out of this file. Now because I've made changes here, Excel is going to ask me, do I want to save my changes? So I've just pressed this red X button over here and it's saying do you want to save your changes to the file and it actually tells you to save it somewhere on your computer. So the default location it'll say is somewhere on your computer here. I want to know where that is because I'm not sure where this folder is so I'm going to go more save options. It's going to load up here and then I'm going to choose my documents or you can save it wherever you want somewhere that you know how to access later on your computer and press save. So I'm going to rename it Excel book for learning and save that there. Now I can exit it successfully because Excel has allowed me to save. However, when you're saving it normally, we want to press this button up here, this save button. Now I've just opened a new book and it's asking me to save it again. But when I have saved it in a location, it'll say up the top here, saved. And if I make a change over here and press save, it's just going to update to save and I can press X and there's no warning because it's been saved. You can also press Control S on your keyboard to save it a little bit quicker. Now let's talk about this, the fill handle. So you see this little green box around each of the cells that I select? This is called a filled handle. And as you can see, there's this little green box down the bottom right corner. And if I bring that down, it actually highlights either a row or a column like this. Now what that does is, let's say I have some numbers in here, one, two, three, okay? So if I select this last number and I bring it down like this, what it will do is actually copy it down like this. If I have a formula on the other hand, let me just copy this across by pressing Control V, by the way, and then select that and delete it. So if I have a formula that's going equals that plus one and copy that down, so this one has the formula that plus one. If I drag this down now, instead it's going to be dragging this formula down. So if I drag this down once, if I drag this down once, see what happens. It's now going the same formula. It's moving this box down each time going plus one. So the formula is not changing, but the cell that it's linking to is. So we can drag this down and all of a sudden we have a pattern. Now I want to I want to show you one more thing with the fill handle. Now notice here how it went one, two, three, four, and then it just copied it down like this. What if I wanted to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine quickly? So there is an easy way of doing that with the fill handle as well. Basically what you do is you hold down the control button on your keyboard and then drag it down and see what happens. Now it's a list. There's no formula in there because in the formula bar it's just hard coded. 
but it's an easy way of doing a list. Let's say I just want to do my shopping list real quick. I'm going to bring this up like that, hold down control, and then I can put my shopping item and my dollar over here. Maybe put some formatting over here as well. So I'm going to make this centered and bold as well, and maybe shorten this column over here. And then what I'm going to do is type in eggs and then go 299. Okay. So, just to bring this back to our conversation before and link in some other learnings, what I'm also going to do is just change this format here by pressing the dollar sign. So what that'll do is change it to a currency like that. And now, not that it makes a difference between a number and a currency, they're effectively the same thing, it's just the formatting. And now I'm going to drag this down like that. And there we go, we've got our shopping list, easy as. Uh, we can also sum it by highlighting all of these and seeing down the bottom we've got 149 total, average $9.99. Okay, the next thing that we're going to talk about, which is also fundamental to Excel, is formulas. So understanding them and typing them. Over here, we've used the example of a shopping list, and we've just put some random items in there. And we've got our dollar values over here. Now, what I want to do is I want to add up all of these formulas. So, sorry, all of these numbers. And the way we do that is by using a formula. So, what we're going to do is there's two ways to enter a formula. Number one is you can select on any cell that you want to have the formula in. For example, we want to have a total over here. And let me just add in this top and bottom formatting as well. Nothing like a nicely formatted workbook. And then what I'm going to do is option one is I can type right into the cell. I'll go equals sum, oh, sorry, equals sum bracket. And then I'm going to select every cell in here. So a quick way is just going control shift up. Or you can just select the range with your mouse or keyboard like that. So you'll see that the sum range is corresponding to cell D3 through to D17. Now, finally, I'm going to put an end bracket. Now you might be wondering, how did I know that was the formula to use? You might also be thinking, well, this is way too basic for me. Don't worry, we we'll go through it in more complexity a little later on. We're just going to get the fundamentals right, and then we'll get more advanced as we go, okay? So don't, don't get ahead of yourself yet. Okay, so that's one way of entering a formula. Another way of entering a formula, so let's redo that, is to actually put it up here in the formula bar. Now you can drag and make this bigger if you want. Uh, I don't want to do that because I want to see a little bit different. And you can actually type it in like this. So I'm going to go equals sum and then select the range like that. Maybe format it bold as well. I just control B on my keyboard to make it bold. An other alternative, but I don't recommend doing this, is similar to the second option, but you actually just press this little formula button. If you don't know what the function is or the formula, they're the same thing, press this little function button here and it teaches you how to use it. Um, but I actually prefer not to do that method. Now, something to note if you're not really sure how the formula works, for example, equals, you type equals, you type your function, which is sum, and then from this list, it's got all the different types of formulas which start with sum. Now, to start the actual formula, once you're happy with it, we put in these little brackets here. And basically that says, okay, we've put in the bracket. Now the formula begins. And as soon as you do that, this little box pops up and it tells you how does the formula work. Well, the sum is adding things up. And to get it in the right forma, formula, sorry, form, <laughs> format, we need to go number one, comma, number two, comma, dot, dot, dot. So dot, dot, dot means it's in a series and it goes on in continuation. So option one is we can go, we can either type the numbers, we can go 1699 plus, but don't do that, that's very inefficient. Actually select the cell, and then it says comma, number two, comma, number three, comma, number four, etc. You can do that all the way up there. So that's how the formula is working. Alternatively, and this is how we did it, and this is how I recommend you do it, is you do what's called a range. So you can either do it by just dragging it up like that, 
and then ending the formula. And that's exactly the same as going sum this, sum that plus that plus that plus blah, 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 blah. But it's so much faster. And you'd be surprised how many people actually do that. They manually add it up. So this is the exact same thing. Instead, it's going number one, but every number in between as well. So let's just press enter, and we get the total, which is corresponding to that down there. Now, just remember, for anyone just starting out in Excel, you must have an Excel, you must have an equal sign there. If you just type sum, blah, it's not going to work, okay? You need to have the equal sign because that's how you tell Excel that there is a formula. So another little trick, which will become more and more important as you do advanced and more complex Excel stuff, is you can add spaces in. So let's say we're going equals sum these, uh, this, and this, and this, and this, all right? Now let's say you've got this really complicated formula in there. What you can actually do is space it out like this. Makes it a little bit easier to read. And you can press S, you get the same uh, answer, except it's a little bit easier to read. It's a little bit spaced out. You can add as many spaces as you want. Um, Excel still understands it. Okay, so we're almost at the end of the first unit. So we're just going to be talking about saving new workbook, which we talked about. We're going to talk about spelling check, um, which we mentioned, but I'll show you, and then finally printing. For the spelling check, you might have noticed that there's two spelling mistakes in the shopping list, and before I send it off to a client, I want to make sure that I pick them up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to tab, and in here, we've got the first little button here is the spelling. So I'm going to press that, and it's going to go, okay, eggs is incorrect. So I'm going to change that. It's saying not in dictionary, this is what it could be. Or I could say it's eggs or egg rest, but I'm going to change it to eggs. Change that. Do you want to continue checking from the beginning? And now it's picked up this one over here. See how it's highlighted the cell? I can also change all. If it's, if it's going to be the same, uh, change every time it says EGS to eggs, I'm going to press change I'll do that throughout the workbook. Okay, then the final thing we're going to be talking about is printing. So before we press file print, which will send it to your printer, along with changing the portrait orientation, uh, the page size, um, and how narrow your margins are, which makes it a little bit spaced out on the page, what I actually want to show you is this, so view, page break, view. So we talked about this a little bit before. So what this does is, this shows you based on your selection of page size and orientation, what it's going to look like on the page. So let me just bring this up, show you a little bit more. Um, so let's say I want to print uh, all of these, I'm just going to make sure it looks like that. And then, because I want the little space down the bottom, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go File Print, and now it will show you a preview of what that's going to look like on here. So another option is here, Print Active Sheets. So you'll notice that in the workbook, I've got a lot of tabs down the bottom. So if I go File Print, this is only, only going to print the sheet that I'm currently on. But I can also change this to Print Entire Workbook. And all of a sudden, you'll see this number down here change to a very large number. And hopefully, my computer doesn't crash as a result of it. Um, and you can also, uh, similar to other Microsoft Word app applications, you can also change the number of pages you want to print. You might only want to print from page 1 to 3, or for pages from 3 to 5. You can change your number of copies up the top. Um, you can change whether your printing is going to be one-sided, etc. Um, and that's pretty much um, all we need to talk about. That's the end of Chapter 1, Creating a New Workbook.